Anne Mary Chomhanji lives here in the deeper recesses of Boheju district. At dawn, she commences a journey to the gold mines. She says farewell to the family and she commences the journey on a dirt road, which is miles away. Bye bye. It's a tough day ahead as she ponders about the dangers she must overcome at the gold mine. She is one of an estimated 90,000 women involved in artisano and small-scale miners. In Mubende and Buhweju, some of the districts where Global Rights Alert works, there are an estimated 78,550 artisano and small-scale gold miners. Of these, 15,403 are women. Most of them do petty work such as carrying sand, panning for gold, and cooking, among others. In these gold mines, reveals the plight of these women. The problems here range from limited platforms for articulating their concerns and interests, lack of protective gear, and little pay, among others. Women are paid a paltry 100 shillings for each basin of sand they collect from the pit. Beads of sweat clog this woman's face, but she must make 100 trips to the pit to collect 100 basins of sand for her to raise just 10,000 shillings to buy a kilogram of meat. The use of mercury and cyanide is another sticky issue. Some women could get miscarriage due to use of mercury. Now, internationally, we have the Minapata Convention, which Uganda, I think, now is a signatory which is going to ban the use of mercury in such activities like asnaro gold mining. These affect the health safety of workers, the community and the environment. Deaths have also been reported in gold mines as a result of lack of safety measures. Two women died in this gold mine when soils caved in. Actually, what happened, it, the women were carrying sand of gold as they were carrying sand. So the wall broke down and the, it beat them. So they have to die. This working environment, coupled with limited decision-making powers and control, renders women involved in artisano and small-scale mining vulnerable to decisions of their male employers with little or no regard to gender concerns and interests. This makes women's working environment in the mines neither safe nor productive. Perhaps this is attributed to the low levels of representation of women on mining associations. The men, most, most of them are a bit learned eh? more than the women. Because now the women, if they tell someone to become a leader, she will say, I oh, will not manage. But at least with the men, some are educated. So to see uh, mining associations that we are dominantly, you know, uh, male-led, uh, saying let's have a woman on the, on the committee, to see the mining associations saying let us help other women also to form their women uh, association, like the case in, in, in Movende, I think women mine at, at Zano miners are forming their own association, and the male one are, 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 have, have accepted. See that every time we are speaking at a conference, women are able to stand up and give presentations and give testimonies. For us, it's very encouraging. These places we are not available. The Directorate of Geological Survey and Mines in the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development is mandated to ensure that mining is conducted in a sustainable, safe, and productive environment. We have already told them we need women to be represented 30%. It's not only the representation. 
their safety needs to be taken into account. As I've already said, once we are benefiting from these mineral wells, we are not just looking at the physical benefit. We need to have a healthy society. Uh, the women are very vulnerable by their nature of uh, being uh, a woman. In the mines, are there mechanisms for women to raise issues about safe and reproductive spaces to improve the quality of their work? When we talk about global rights, we have a seminar about cultural era. In order to change this narrative, Global Rights Alert, a civil society organization, has mobilized these women into caucuses to articulate their issues to relevant duty bearers to advocate and improve safe and productive spaces in the mines. This is one of the meetings here in Kasanda Town Council, Kasanda District. In Mwenda District, women did not have a collective voice to bargain for their stay. Today, the area where they were eking a living has been sealed off by the army and police. When they evicted the uh, people in Mobende, we had this national, a national dialogue and we brought in you know, women who had been evicted from the mines, men who had been evicted. And I remember that point in time, government had issued you know, directives to have all the other uh, mines, miners in different parts of the country also evicted. So the women, you know, they put up a case and said, you can, this is a livelihood. And they spoke from, you know, experience, they spoke from what they were doing, and said, you may want to clean the, the sector, but this is not the way to do it. So I think that sort of informed um, government to hold the other evictions, the, other, the upcoming evictions in the other districts. For now, the future looks bleak as there are no plans to allow artisanal and small-scale miners in the district back in the mines. If well managed, the mining sector has potential to lift thousands out of poverty and spur growth and development in the country. Because of the nature of artisanal mining, which is informal, government often favors investors at the expense of its own citizenry. In May 2018, Cabinet approved the new Minerals and Mining Policy 2018. The policy is meant to guide Uganda's mineral sector and address the gaps in the mining laws. The policy looks at the need to support formalization and regulation of artisanal and small-scale mining to ensure they optimally benefit from mineral wealth, protect the environment, and mitigate health, safety, and environmental impacts associated with mining. It also focuses on mainstreaming gender equity, human rights and inclusiveness in the mineral sector, as well as the need to enhance local and national participation. It could save these women from exploitation akin to modern slavery at the hands of their masters and restore their dignity.